All right, so endoscopic medial maxillectomy has in a lot of ways supplanted open approaches, things like lateral rhinotomy, um, provides very, very good exposure if you have a tumor in the maxillary sinus. Also very useful for folks that have, um, can I just see a section? Um, for folks that have like condemned mucosa or people with CF, you know, you're making a large um, dependent, um, dependently draining structure uh, antrostomy that you can debride. Um, let's get a maxillary seeker. I just want to see if we can get under the um, inferior turbinate here real quick. And I uh, like maybe a maxillary seeker. Here it is. I got it. No worries. No worries. So we're just going to look for the valve of Hasner real quick. And you'll usually see it as a little flap of mucosa. And if you identify that, then you know that if you stay below it and posterior to it, then you're not going to violate the lacrimal duct. And Greg's already exposed it for us up here. <clears throat> so we know it's going to be right in that area right about here. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to resect the inferior turbinate. Let me have a, uh, do we have a side-biting uh, Stenberger punch to the right? Uh, I think they're on that tray right there. Yeah. So to the right, the other side, yeah. So you can do this a bunch of different ways. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut through the inferior turbinate. Coming from inferior to superior. Some people will start with the antrostomy and just come down through the turbinate. You can go either way. Uh, also realize that as you're resecting the inferior turbinate, there is going to be a branch from the uh, sphenopalatine artery that comes in the posterior end. So when you do resect this, you do have to um, make sure that you deal with that stump. So I'll cauterize the stump every time, whether it's bleeding or not. Let me have a straight through cut, please. Thanks. And so we're just going to go ahead and resect this. In the interest of time, I'm just going to yank it out. But again, that stump you would definitely want to do something about and cauterize it at the end of surgery. I'm just going to leave it down there. Tuck that down there for you, Ian. <clears throat> okay, so let's see those... Um, Let's see the antrum punches again. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either come down from above and just take it down towards the nasal floor, or you can basically drill out down below and then come up. So what we're going to do is we're going to start coming down. And these downbiting punches are really, really good for this purpose. And knowing where Hasner's valve is, you can also carry your resection anteriorly down below it. All that is fair game. Would you mind uh, mentioning how you can make a, your incision? Yeah, 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 sure. So the other thing you can do, let me have a sickle knife real quick. <clears throat> so the second method, if you want to avoid having a bunch of exposed bone when you're done drilling, is you can make a little mucosal flap. Basically like this and just sort of lay it aside. I would use a slightly different blade for this, obviously. We didn't give Roy the right instruments, uh, but usually if you take a, uh, you're, you're taking that and you keep it attached along the floor. Uh, sorry, I didn't explain what I, what I was thinking of. Uh, just cut here and here. Oh, see, I was going to take this whole thing down and bring that back over. But my cuts are actually, they should go so right Roy's, above here. So Roy's going more of an inside-out <laughs> flap. Uh, he was going to use the maxillary sinus mucosa for his flap. You can do that, or you can just use this nasal floor. And if you keep it attached along the floor and make your incisions so up the to that maxillary again. os, it's, a, I would say, a, another option. But uh, Ray and I were just talking. I use a, a either needlepoint or... Uh, cautery or just a bent protected bovie tip for the flap. You can also, what do you use? Uh, oh, he uses the needle point for this flap. It's nice because then you get hemostasis. 
All right, Roy, it's all yours. All right, so anyway, we're going, uh, we're continuing down here, and then you have to realize that the, obviously the maxillary sinus um, floor is below the uh, level of the nasal floor, so you're going to have to drill that down. I'm going to have a backbiter real quick. Thanks for stabilizing the head. Yeah, do you have one facing the other direction? Oh, this is just a spinning. Perfect. Thanks. And then we'll take the drill after we're done here. Okay. And so now you can see that you have access, you know, before you even drill down, you've got access to the anterior uh, border of the maxillary sinus if you use angled scopes. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and start drilling. <clears throat> uh, let's have a 15 uh, degree drill. And if you really need access to the most anterior portion of the maxillary sinus, you can either, like I said, you can use a 70 degree scope um, or even um, use a transeptal approach and come from the other side as well. So we're just gonna take this down by drilling. Thank you. like a 30 degree scope and that's just with a zero and with a 30 you should be able to see quite a bit more <clears throat> okay so we have a 30 now you can see quite a bit more of the uh, lateral wall and almost all the way anteriorly. And with a 70, you can begin to see right there the anterior border of the maxillary sinus. Um, so like Greg was alluding to, I made my cut short. But otherwise, you could take this flap now and basically lay it back across so you don't have exposed bone. <clears throat> 